I started retouching this photo in Affinity Photo in the previous video. I showed the frequency separation process. In this video, we're going to be doing the dodge and burn process to bring back the highlights and the shadows that were in the original picture. Hello, I'm Yemi. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to start off by renaming the group that I created for frequency uh, separation. I'm going to name it the frequency separation uh, group and then we're going to look at the picture, turn that layer, that group off so that you can see where the lights and shadows fall naturally on the picture. And then we're going to go to our adjustments. We're going to create two adjustment layers. So one for curves or two for curves rather. So there are going to be two curves. One is going to rep represent highlights. The other is going to represent the shadows. So the highlights will be called the dodge. You can put highlights if it helps you remember better. And then the other one is going to be called the burn, which will represent the shadows in the picture. So once you're done renaming your files or your layers, rather, you're going to group them and then name it dodge and burn or highlights and shadows, depending on which one works better for you, for your memory. The next thing you're going to do after that is to create one more layer, but this is going to be the black and white layer. You're going to use the red there as much as possible to the point where you can still see the picture see the subject and see your highlights and your shadows this layer is just going to help you to identify where your highlights are and where your shadows are by the time you start you know making your adjustments in the curves so now you can close this 60 or 65 is okay for this picture it will differ picture to picture so now you can go into your dodge and burn layer i mean group rather and then you're going to select either the highlights or the shadows so if you're selecting the highlights you're going to take the highlights up a little the curve just leave the curve from the center just a little you're going to close that go to the shadows part and also do the same thing but in the opposite direction you're going to reduce that a little so it darkens the picture a bit as well now you're going to close that now the next thing you're going to do for this picture is to create mask and to create your mask you're going to control i or command i depending on what system you're using so now that you've created mask you can now begin your painting for the highlights and the shadows make sure your frequency separation layer is turned off like i said before and your background layer is turned on so you can see the picture so now you're going to go into your group the group that i created for the dodge and burn you're going to pick the highlights we'll start with the highlights Make sure that your brush is white, uh, the color is white, and then we're going to paint on the bright parts of the picture. With the brush tool, this particular brush, your opacity should be set to about 100 or less depending on what you want. Hardness is zero because we want the softest brush possible. And then your flow should be two. I used to in Photoshop, so that kind of works for me. You can adjust to whatever settings work for you, but these are the settings that work for me at the moment. So with this now we can start painting white on the bright parts of the picture. So the forehead, you find some white parts there, the eyes, the cheek, the brow, um, the top of the brow, forgot, the brow bone, is it brow bone? <laughs> when you're working with makeup, you tend to like do things based on how, you know, the picture is or like how the makeup was done. So you paint the bright parts bright and sometimes you adjust depending on, you know, you kind of have to use some discretion basically so the cheeks the cheekbones the chin area the lips the teeth the eyes so the inside of the eyes like the white part of the eyes and sometimes the dark part as well if there's like light reflection in the eyes i paint that white as well um the color if you this subject is not facing front so that will apply but like the color basically anywhere the light f uh, was falling on in the actual picture you're going to emphasize that back after the infrequency separation because that kind of takes away sometimes takes away the lights that was originally in the picture i'm going to do the same thing to the body you know go over to the body and start adding lights to different parts of the picture in the body area so different i also do it to the dress sometimes it depends on the picture to be honest and how i'm feeling but sometimes i go over to the dress too and you know do some things on there too i also paint the jewelry as well if they were in jewelry i paint the jewelry as well but it's up to you 
once that is done i go over to the other side and start to do like the opposite so focus on the dark parts of the picture so the places where shadows should fall so if you're working with makeup once again you know that there's contour on the forehead the top of the upper part of the forehead there's contour on the cheekbones like below uh there's contour on the nose there's contour on the lips some or like on top of the lips sometimes and you kind of have to focus on those places when you're adding your shadows so that you can emphasize the makeup make the makeup look better especially after you've done frequent separation and smoothing the skin it's good to like bring back some of those shadows into the picture so wherever these shadows fall or where they fell on the original picture when it was shot you kind of have to bring that back after frequent separation i do that with the dress too same thing and if they're wearing maybe something really dark sometimes i like to like darken whatever it is that was dark before so it's basically up to you your creativity and whatnot when you're doing this dodge and bone process so once that is done you can go over turn off your black and white layer and check out the picture see if you need to make any changes if some things are heavy handed like i noticed the the cheekbone the contour there was a little too much for me so i went into the shadows layer and then i clicked on the layer the shadows layer i went to the opacity part and reduced that to about 50 or oh, i think i used 35 eventually so you can adjust that later to to just make sure that you know things are not looking too weird when you do your edits so that's like the good thing about this method of doing the dodge and burn you can make your changes they're not like permanent and whatnot you can adjust them so i went on to still paint just still touching up different parts of the picture till my heart's content which is something you can do i touched some parts of the forehead as well and the hair and the nose and you know the eyeshadow so sometimes there's dark eyeshadow i tend to like go back and paint those areas too so yeah that's pretty much what the dodge and bond process is for me uh, you can turn that on and off you can turn on your frequent separation to like check your full process out and see where you're at you know examine your progress and see if you still need to touch some things so this is pretty much it you can try dodge and burn there are other methods to this that you can use but this is like my i don't know my go-to method for the most part you can try this out i think the next video we're going to be doing i'll be trying to whiten or yeah whiten the eyes and teeth and whatnot so hopefully you are able to check that out and if you have any questions maybe about settings or whatnot you can let me know in the comments and i'll definitely answer you to the best of my ability Thank you for watching today. I hope to see you guys in another video. Bye for now.